Hi and welcome to this chess video. We're going to look at a tournament game that I played uh, at the time of recording. Uh, um, uh, no, not a month. A week ago, and this will be a French defense. Hopefully, some themes you can learn from. So this was, this was played in the Icelandic North Congress or Skaukthing Norlendinga in Icelandic. So second round game, 25 minutes with no increment for the game. And my opponent in this game was Johan Ingvarsson, rated 21-44. So I had the black pieces, and as this is my own game, I will look at it from my own perspective, the black pieces. And my opponent opened with e4. My opponent is uh, is a very strong attacking player, uh, and very dangerous with the initiative. So I wasn't really sure if I wanted to deviate from the French. Sometimes I play g6 or, or c5. Sometimes even knight c6. But I felt uh, the Sicilian was more up his alley. So I just uh, stuck to my French. <coughs> d4, d5, knight c3, uh, and bishop b4, the Vinever variation. We played the game in this variation before. And... I played a line that I'm not like super happy with. I mean, it's it's fine for black, but uh, for some reason I wanted to to deviate here, and I played queen d7. Now this is an older line. I I associate this with, with uh, the likes of Petrosian, who likes to play, you know, closed blocking positions, and that was what I was aiming for. So there are many ideas, but most often black is trying to castle on the queen side. Queen d7 looks weird, but most often b6 will follow, knight c6, and quite often the, the bishop goes either to a6 or b7. If I want to castle, queen side probably goes to b7, and then I castle queen side. And we have sort of a uh, mirrored pattern of the king's Indian defense on the queen side. Also, if queen to g4, which is... Uh, Quite often an option for for white in the French. Then Petrosian like to play bishop f8. Now that the okay we played why did we play bishop b4 and then bishop to f8? Bishop to b4 was to put pressure on e4. If if we if we go back, so bishop b4 here is putting pressure on e4. We're threatening to take the pawn, so white's options are usually centered around this pawn. The main move is e5, but sometimes takes on d5, sometimes he plays bishop d3 protecting the pawn, a rare move is queen to d3, and they all protect the pawn. So more or less, all of white's moves here, you know, solve the central tension. So if we go to this variation, bishop to f8, now that white has played e5, bishop b4 has solved the central tension, and now the position has become closed. So therefore we do have, in some cases, time to spend that we don't have if, if there's a tension in, in the position. So the position is closed, we don't want to weaken our kingside, the bishop protects, and now we go along with the plan of b6, bishop b7, knight c6, and queenside castles. And then, when everything's ready, we will start breaking with f6, usually trying to initi initiate action on the kingside. A very close strategical nature of the position. But all that didn't really come to uh, fruition in this one. My opponent played bishop e3, which is a rare move and uh, I don't think particularly useful. Um, okay, he's maybe uh, stopping c5, but I'm not really playing c5 in this variation if I play queen d7. So to me, it seems a little bit too early to define this bishop. It's fine on c1, and often when I take on c3, you want to be able to go to a3, to a very good diagonal. And, you know, it doesn't seem like it has any role on e3 that it, that it doesn't already have on, on c1. So to me, this move is rare for a reason. I went on with b6. So at this stage, I'm not sure if I want to go here, uh, Fionchetto on castle, or if I want to go here and exchange this bishop, which is quite often... A very useful plan for for black and the French. And now f4. Again, I don't like this move. And 
also not in conjunction with bishop e3. <clears throat> the idea with f4 is often you want to attack with f5. But if you can't do that, you know, sometimes this bishop will become a very uh, restrained piece. And black has very good weapons often to fight against f5. He can play h5 at some point and then put the knight on f5. And if white can't get the attack going, then I think f4 creates more weaknesses than, than are necessary. You can always play f4 later. And in general, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this move. I decided here to take on c3, just to create an imbalance. You see now that if the bishop had been on c1, you know, maybe you have this available. But now you have to spend some time on it. Uh, and if he does now, then maybe I'll, I'll castle queenside. But here I decided to go for bishop a6, because, okay, I exchanged the bishop, uh, the, the bishop on c3. So now if I exchange the light-squared bishops, I'm really already eyeing outpost from a knight on, on c4 and f5, light squares. And if we can exchange the light-squared bishop, this quite often becomes a bad piece. But my opponent is aware of this, and he plays bishop d3. And the idea of this is he will take with a pawn on d3, and this will fortify this square, not give me an easy outpost. Here I decide to go on with development, I play a normal move, knight to e7, and I'm queen to g4. Um, looking at it back now, I'm, I'm not sure why I didn't just, just castle here. I mean, it looks dangerous, but I'm already exchanging the light squared bishop, and f4 is blocking this bishop from coming to h6, so I don't really have to worry about too much on the king side, even though it looks dangerous, but in my experience in the French, there, there's not much to worry about there. I did play bishop takes d3. He took with a pawn. Of course, he doesn't have time to take here, because I just play rook g8, hit the queen. You don't even have this, and then I just win a piece. So c takes d3. And now I played queen b5. Again, Castling is definitely an option. And then, yeah, there are interesting ideas. One that I found with the computer that uh, I, of course, didn't see. But uh, this is very interesting. Castles. Knight f3. And I'll see if... No, 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 f5. I was looking at f5. It, it's always an option. And I think it's it's quite okay here. Maybe it's not good to give up the e5 square, but nonetheless, play after a revol revolver on this guy not being too great. But after knight f3, c5 is actually a very interesting uh, sacrifice that the commu uh, computer recommends. If it takes queen b5, we're hitting this and this, and while I was looking at it, okay, what if I just take queen takes d3? Uh, okay, I thought, oh, but what can play b7? What is this? But okay, we take with jack, king f1, and now just knight to c6, takes, takes. And the computer plays, uh, claims that this is close to a two-pawn advantage for black. And the more I look at it, uh, I have to agree. I mean, the king is quite bad. We're done the exchange, but uh, we're going to win some pawns. This is weak. This is already dropping off. The knights are coming to tremendous squares. We can, you know, go to the b-file. And yeah, the king is a big problem and the coordination of the white pieces. So a very interesting variation. And maybe an idea, you know, that I can try to add to my repertoire. But I played queen to b5. Okay, I'm taking this pawn. Okay, perhaps. Again, hoping for something like this when I play here. And this is just game over. I'm hitting the rook here and next move on taking on g2 and h1. He can't do that. So he played the better move, queen to d1. I decided here to put my knight on f5, which is a nice square, and then cement it with, with h5. Which is often quite useful. I didn't really con consider queen b2, which is probably an, an idea here, but I went to h5. <coughs> so while this is usually a useful idea, I'm not entirely convinced this is the correct move here. Okay, I do get this knight, nice knight, and I, I felt like this was not a very good piece. 
But on the other hand, it's not so easy for me to, to pick a side for my king. And where to put this knight. You know, if I castle now, I always have to worry about this pawn. Okay, he did play knight f3. But even so, if I castle, there's just knight g5. And he can start opening things up. Going to the queen side. You know, he's ready to open things up a little bit with, you know, c4 or a4, a5. So I'm not feeling too great about that. Uh, so I decided not to, you know, decide anything just yet. I played knight c6. He castled. And now knight c to e7. I wanted the knight here. Put, put pressure on this pawn. And maybe if he plays g3, I can think about my move like h4, perhaps. I was calculating some variations. Yeah, h4, g4, maybe knight h6. When I'm hitting two pawns and... If he plays g5, knight back to f5. Felt like it could be okay. But uh, he just played queen to c2 here. Uh, wasn't too sure what the point was. Uh, he wants to push c4 at some point, I guess. But here now he, he first played a4. The queen went to c6. My idea was, I thought he would play g3. I thought my queen would be useful here on, on c6 to... Uh, you know, sort of prophylaxis if you play c4, a take, and are hitting this knight. But he defended with queen to d2. Okay, again, I wasn't sure where to put my king, but here I felt like I played f6, and I thought, okay, he takes, a take. And my king should be quite safe here on f7. And that's probably correct. Having said that, you know, I like my position on... You know, in a strategical sense, but it's not easy to move forward. I have to find some way to, to break at some point. And I'm not sure really <laughs> how I do that. So probably, objectively, this is better for white. You play rook f to c1 here. Obviously wants to push c4. And I decided to play rook d8, sort of, you know, anticipating c4, which he played nonetheless. Now I took. And... Okay, if he takes with a pawn, I think I'm just fine. Either castles or king f7. But he took with, with the rook. Which I thought he couldn't do. I thought he was positionally suspect. Because I was giving away this huge square. If, if I get a knight here, I think it's just strategically game over almost. This guy will be just out of the game, hemmed in by its own pawns. Meanwhile, the knights will be fantastic. You know, attacking the, the king side, some pawns there, supporting my advance on the on the queen side. Because now in some end games, I, I can push uh, at some stage later like this and create the pass pawn. So I thought this would be tremendous for me, and I was feel, feeling quite confident here. But my next move was, wasn't all that great. I played queen to b7 here. I should have played queen to d7. And the idea here is, okay, he puts pressure on, on c7. This was his whole idea of, of uh, at least strategically ugly, rook takes c4. I mean, you create these double pawns here, you give me this wonderful square, so you have to have some dynamics instead. But I can protect with rook c8. And you can't increase the pressure with queen here, because now I just take on f4. The knight is coming to this square, and you don't have time to take on c7. That's just a blunder, a take, take, and knight e2, check. Winning the rook on c1. Or the exchange he of course takes back like this. But this is just winning for black. I mean, king f7 or castles, rook c8. Put something on d5 and this bishop is still dead. So that was my, my whole strategic idea. Basically this, this dead bishop. To play against it. But queen b7 was, wasn't the best. Because after rook ac1. Okay I thought I would defend here with rook d7. And this looks good. Because now I'm just coming here. If I can do this, I'm, you know, the game is over. But he found rook c6. I thought this wasn't anything, you know, I just play king f7, which I did. And, you know, then I'm threatening this. So king f7. And this is coming to d5, and I'm strategically winning. I should have, however, played uh, move a missed here. Knight g7 immediately. And now he takes on e6, queen to d5. And the rook doesn't have a square. 
So if you know if you don't, okay, you will get some compensation for the exchange, and the position is still, you know, up for grabs. But you know, if the move rook, rook moves back here, then knight d5, protecting c7, and black is much better. Should have done that. I did play instead of the rook c6. I did play king f7. Okay, we have this threat of the knight coming to d5. And white well, has an excellent move here, which I missed. Pause and see if you can find it. The strongest move for white here. My opponent played d5. And this is the danger in, in, uh, in rapid games. It's only 25 minutes. And you don't calculate as much as in, uh, in a classical game. Because the time is such an important factor, because it's there's no increment. And I simply missed this move. Now, of course, if I take an e6, this uh, wins material. But I thought, okay, uh, rook e8. I was a little bit worried about, you know, takes, takes, two times and some sort of check here. Let's see the variation I was worried about, actually. It's like this, takes, takes, and, uh, ooh, let's go back. We have to put various in color. He takes, a take, and, yeah, I was worried about this. Queen a2, check. I thought queen d5, rook c6, but this was a blind spot because I can just go here and the queen is still protected. So this should be okay. Even though, okay, well, yeah, this actually this is what I was worried about because, uh, yeah, I'm losing pawns here, right? Yeah, I didn't like this, but I thought, okay, at least I'm surviving. It's an end game. He still has this bad bishop. This is under attack, you know. I should be able to draw this. And plus, I didn't really have a move, so I just played rookie eight. Here my opponent found another strong move that I didn't see. I'm not sure he saw this idea. It's, it's very strong. He played d4. And at first I thought he just blundered because now I'll take on d5 and I didn't immediately see his continuation. And I'm not sure. He thought very well here. So maybe he just found it here. I'm not sure he played d4 and saw the idea. But queen d3 is very strong here. And believe it or not, this yeah, knight that was standing here quite proudly on this outpost doesn't have a good square. If I go to, let's say, e7, e6, again, getting forward, four kata, four kalicious. What else do we have? I don't have time for this, of course, it just takes. And even though I get a check, you know, this is hanging. Uh, what else is there? Uh, no, there's nothing else really. And I couldn't find a move. I just couldn't find a move. Uh, I went with knight h6. Of course, I realized, I mean, you can play f5 and then e6. But okay, I thought, okay, I have to try something. I'll play knight f8 and take or something. But he played an even better move, which I didn't see either. Knight g5 check. So like I said, when, when he gets when he gets an attack and the initiative, he can very, be very dangerous to anybody. And he has some nice nice wins under his belt. So definitely a player that you can't underestimate. And I did understand his uh, I do understand his, his strengths and weaknesses. And I tried to avoid it by going for a strategical, you know, close position. And I was very close to achieving that. I mean, if he didn't have that D5 move and I managed to close it out on D5. And it's just uh, exactly what I wanted. But okay, here, uh, if I move my king, just takes this. I took the knight, but okay, keeping material equality. But of course, I'm just getting toasted here. Um, okay, what to do? I mean, we have to do something. Knight f7, e6. Might still be the best option. I want knight g8. Not sure why even. Here I thought e6 was, was curtains, curtains once again, but he played queen takes h5, which I didn't really understand, but it, it doesn't really matter. It's just completely winning. I thought he was letting me off the, off the hook. I thought I had here and here, and okay, if I can do that, 
and you know get some some play on the light squares get the knight into the game then maybe i'm okay but you know once you start blundering or missing things especially in such a time control it's very hard to regain your uh, orientation and, and i just we played e6 and that's just game over queen is coming here can't move the rook because queen f7 so here i called it a day so yeah strong attack by my opponent i mean I, you just have to if your opponent finds moves like this d5 uh, which are newspaper worthy then you know there's nothing you can do and this meant i was yeah not off to a good start one out of two again if you didn't see my first round game i will leave a, leave a link in the card and also at the end there will be a playlist with all the games from this tournament well, yeah, okay, we have to move on to round three, and it's clear I have to step up my game here. So, hopefully, I'll see you in the next video from this tournament. And I'm signing out for now. Thank you. Bye bye.